Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Opportunistic Trader. It is Thursday, October 4th, and we are joined by Tracy Shukart of uh, uh, Independent Trader, who joins us all the time talking about all the markets, uh, S&P, crude, euro, takes a look at the technicals, the fundamentals, and uh, takes a deep dive into the markets for us regularly. How's it going, Tracy? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We've got some activity. The S&P is down about 1% right now, which I think if we were to close here, this would be the first 1% move since June, which is uh, pretty remarkable how long that's been. Right. It can be a whole 1%, but right. <laughs> right. A whole 1%. But we are seeing uh, some activity. Volatility's popping a bit. We're up 23% now, actually, in the VIX. Uh, we're trading 1437. So that's, uh, you know, getting to be a pretty good move there. Um, right. So we've got what, crude, crude breaking down a little bit as well. Oh, um, crude's been all over the place. Definitely I, want to talk about that. Um, so yeah, take me through. What are you looking at right now? Yeah, absolutely. Well, actually, you know, I, I was uh, for yes, you know, I was watching for this, this trend line to break, this daily trend line, even though this is a daily chart. Uh, but that was kind of, you know, that was kind of a key uh, thing that I, I was watching. It looks like, you know, it looks like possible. Um, you know, we could have some more downside or I'm looking for this, you know, to see if we go back and uh, re go back and retest this trend line and then break down. Say if you were, you know, not short yet, you know, that would be kind of the move that I would be looking for. It would be kind of something like a retest. So if you were to look at that down. right now, here we are at about 2903. It looks like that was a break of the trend, you know, maybe at the 25 ish sort of. Or I see it there on your chart. It says 2350. And it looks like yeah, it was it, actually like let's see where are we yeah, it was like around twenty, twenty three, twenty twenty six. It's a little bit higher than that. I think it was around twenty three, twenty five, um, and that's really when uh, I started to notice. You started to notice um, some changes to um, the internals of uh, uh, of the candles, um, and that's kind of what I was looking at. Um, you know, whereas you know, so would you be targeting more for? But looking at, your, looking at your lines here, would you be targeting a right. move possibly down to that second line, which looks like it would be about the 2870 level? And then my right. question would be, where would you risk it? Would you put your stop back at 25-ish? Or where, what, what would you be thinking I mean, at this current level? I, would, I mean, as far as this is concerned, like say, for, say you missed the short, right? Um, which, you know, um, I covered a bit too early. Um, really, what I would be looking for is to see if we get some sort of retrace up in here and then... Um, then, you know, I think a short would be, you know, really nice up here. Now, if that just didn't happen, um, you know, I would try to, you know, I, I would try to see if this would bounce a little bit. We had a couple auction gaps um, up near 22, which would be another place that I would look to go short in this area. I mean, this is kind of bringing everything that I'm looking at going together. I probably wouldn't try to chase this right here, but would wait for some sort of retrace. Either that, or you could, you know, wait for it to hit this trend line and take a long there. Yeah, and you know, I know you're the sort of uh, trader that also looks at the why sometimes and looks at the fundamentals of things. You know, what are you thinking uh, is the cause of the weakness today? I mean, we've got a lot of problems. You know, we have yields uh, rising, right? So you know, we'll just you know, eventually, what's going to I think start affecting uh, equities. Um, we've had, you know kind of hit or miss earnings. <laughs> We've had, you know, we're very stretched. So, you know, I'm not surprised that, you know, this market is taking a little breath here, right? Um, yeah, I think, I think you know, typically they, it's a bit normal to have some sort of correction and we have not seen one of those in a long time, even right. a few percent. And so that is uh, definitely something. And, you know, it looks like uh, small caps were really weak to start the right. quarter, and they, they continue to trade pretty heavy. They're down about a percent and a half today, which is very heavy, uh, and they're off to an ugly start for the month. Yeah, I mean, I've been noticing that, too. I mean, they've been kind of the lagging all week, the laggard all week, so it was just kind of amount, uh, I, you know, we had European indices that were looking terrible. Um, then we had, you know, we had our mid caps looking terrible. It was only um, kind of a matter of time before, you know, we had uh, large caps sort of reacting or, you know, ES sort of reacting to those things that were going on. Um, yeah, and I market. also, I'm looking at my board right now. EEM is down 4.5% month to date. Um, 
the Chinese uh, ETF, uh, Spider S&P China ETF, which China's been closed for this whole week, that's down actually right. 5%. So that's going to be a really interesting open uh, when they come back to the market. That's going to be a really interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, and then, you know, it's interesting, you mentioned before financials, uh, the uh, XLF, which is the banking uh, ETF, is which is typically tied to financial, uh, which is typically tied to uh, yields. Uh, they're actually doing pretty well. Month to date, they're actually up a percent and a half. So some pretty heavy uh, uh, divergences there. Right. I mean, there's a lot of go a lot's going on right now. So take me through crude. That's had an active week as well. Really active start to so, the quarter. Right. So I mean, crude again, another market that's completely overstretched. We have. I, I, haven't really said much to this chart yet for you guys, but I was going to. Uh, but you can see we kind of, you know, we've had this wedge. We've been, you know, very stretched. This market's not uh, behaving on fundamentals. This is speculators. OPEC for two days has come out and they're trying to talk the market down, saying, you know, we actually even have some oversupply going on. Um, you know, so this is basically, you know, a speculative move based on. Um, based on positioning. The problem is, is that we're, what's going to start happening, and which is happening, is that the higher these prices go, uh, the worse drag it's going to be on emerging markets, especially with um, the dollar raising too, right? So they're dealing with high oil prices, high, high USD, um, which is for, which is detrimental. So, you know, and, you know, we're sort of seeing a, a breakdown already in um, those emerging markets already. I mean, they're doing terrible with India, Turkey, uh, Argentina. Uh, we have a lot of problems there. So you know, higher oil prices only exacerbate that problem. Um, so it looks like, you know, we're having a little bit of a pullback today. Um, we kind of hit um, on the daily chart, we kind of hit a supply zone, 77 to 70, 76 to 78 uh, was kind of a supply zone. I don't have that chart to show you right this second, but um, so we kind of hit a supply zone where we had traded before. Um, so I'm not surprised that we're, this market is pulling back some. You know, personally, I think that it should pull back more, but you know, we'll follow what price says and what the market says. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what was your take on what do you think caused uh, the, you know, I guess it was, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, we had a huge move uh, higher in crude. Do you think that was more of a blow off top? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I think this whole thing's been kind of a blow up. It's been like, it's been a, it, it's a self fulfilling, you know, it's been like a panic buy, right? So, I mean, we had one of the largest builds we had all year in, um, uh, for inventories, and we'll probably continue to see builds in US inventories because we're in uh, refinery maintenance season, and China has decided to stop buying from the US. So we'll probably continue with those those couple. They were buying uh, BLCC tankers worth, uh, which is you know, over 2 million barrels every time they were purchasing. And so they've cut their purchases entirely right now during this tariff war. And then again, we have refinery maintenance season. So we'll probably continue to see builds, which is typical, um, you know, throughout uh, the rest of October and uh, half of November. Right. Um, so what other charts are you looking at? Um, so, I mean, uh, uh, mostly right now, crude, <laughs> crude, and um, you have that uh, TPO chart that you can show us for yeah uh, TPO chart. So uh, here's the TPO chart. As you can see, I mean we have a ton of damage. We have damage down here. When we went over, remember we were talking about those single blocks. Um, so you know we have damage down here all the way down to like 72, 72, 40ish. Um, we have all sorts of problems in this um, that, that need to be taken care of. I mean, um, we finally corrected this. So I, I ideally, what we would like to see is this market. Usually, you know, you see these things corrected, you know, 24 to 48 hours, sometimes 72. I mean, we've been days on end now where, you know, it's just been this panic, panic buy. Um, so, you know, we'd like to see this market even if it were to continue higher, I'd like to see this market come down, correct some of this, little, little, let a little bit of air out of the market, and then we'll see if it you know, wants to continue to um, move higher or not, or you know, whether it comes back down to reality and uh, starts trading more on fundamentals. 
And what about, is there a way you could quickly change that? It's okay if you can't, but to S&P chart to see how that looks in S&P? Sure. It's interesting. So these charts that you're taking a look at here are courtesy of Trading Technologies. Uh, Tracy's using that software. Uh, very robust, a uh, lot of great technology. The charts look great. Um, so here we are, right, we're in ES. Um, yes, you know, we've had, we had a few days there that we had some problems over here, but the market was kind of trading, trading range bound. Um, uh, we had some problems over here. Um, it kind of corrected it. So we don't really have really, this was a nice blow off top right here where we have three levels. That was a nice blow off top yesterday. Um, it was something that I was looking at. Um, and as far as, you know, other weaknesses within this market, we really don't have anything higher at this point that, you know, we need to go back and, and correct. Everything is kind of lower. Yeah. And as we speak, I just want to give everybody an update. We've actually broken through some new lows here. S&P is trading at 28.98 and a half, which is down 1.1%. And the NASDAQ is down 2.1%, trading at 75.03. Uh, the high on the NASDAQ was 7651 so far uh, move there and VIX continuing higher we're at uh, 1473 which is up 26 and three quarters percent pressure there continue uh, so what sort of levels you know you pointed out before in S&P where the trend broke you're looking you were kind of hoping for a kind of a move higher but you were definitely looking the charts are sh supporting a, a lower sort of price action uh, so right. Would you, what sort of, um, you know, looking more short term, we have non farm payrolls tomorrow. Is that the sort of thing that you would trade in front of or wait to see the data? And Yeah, I mean, I'm not really going to trade in front of that. What I'm actually hoping for is we get some sort of bounce on that to short. <laughs> um, since I sort of let go of my position a little bit too early. So, you know, I'd love to see some sort of bounce. Uh, in that area, uh, but it looks like we have um, some some really heavy selling going on right now um, in ES around uh, 2905 it started. So um, we'll have to kind of see on that. I can kind of show you the chart. Um, let's see, it's on another page, but um, let's see what we got go let's see how do i change this again <laughs> i know um, you also take a look at the euro and that's been a pretty interesting trade because we've had yields move significantly higher but the euro hasn't really moved that much lower you know we're probably down about a big figure over the last uh, few days but given the move in yields um you know i guess my question is what do you expect if we were to get a stronger figure tomorrow non-farm is yeah. that would probably make yields move higher do you think that's the sort of thing that would make euro move lower or uh is that would that be a surprise um, right there yeah i mean i would think that yeah i mean i would i would think that it would make the euro look you know I, at this point i'm looking to short bounces in the euro so i know a lot of people are looking to go long but you know i think that you know just overall you have you know weakness all around in 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 europe so you know i can't really see you know this market back up at you know 1.19 or one point you know 2 or, you know, whatever. So similar, you're kind of looking for rallies to sell euro. Absolutely. And so I don't know, can you see this new screen? Yes, yeah. so I see okay. three different, so can, I see three different yeah. charts. So these are, these are two crude charts and this is, this is another platform that I use that, um, I, I use three different platforms, but, um, so we're kind of looking at, at ES here. Um, you know, we have this major selling going on right here. So I definitely think there's a lot more downside to come. Um, this is our Cum Delta uh, divergence alerts. Um, and then finally over here, we started seeing for the first time in days, we're starting to see some selling over in crude too. They don't necessarily alert unless it's a big price divergence. So, you know, as you can see, they don't show up all the time. It's just when they do, then you know that it's a significant number. Right. Right. Um, so that's kind of, you know, something else that, that I, I'm looking at as well. Yeah. And then, you know, like we said, we have non-farm payroll tomorrow. What else are you looking at as we kind of take a look at next week? Is there, uh, what are the next catalysts that you think could really so, move the markets? I, you know, I don't, I, I mean, really, I'm, I, 
I, you know, I kind of, I don't really trade off of the news so much as in, you know, kind of what price action is doing. Um, you know, I think that Fred is going to continue to raise rates. I think that's going to be a, start to put a, a real drag on uh, on the markets here. Um, you know, we're kind of, you know, we've raised enough that I think by raising more, we're going to say start seeing kind of the cracks appear, so to speak, right? Because we're going to hit a level. I think that beyond what really the market can handle. And we're already, again, we're already seeing that, um, you know, in the emerging market arena. Um, and I, you know, it's kind of spilling over into Europe and, you know, eventually it'll we'll spill over into our markets as well. Um, but as far as, you know, the week ahead, again, I'm just, you know, from looking at everything now as it stands, you know, I'm looking to sell rallies in everything. Yeah, I was about to say that. I was about to, that's what I was about to say. I was going over the different uh, symbols we talked about. S and P looking to sell rallies. Crude, euro. If it, if it pops, so I'm looking to sell it all. If it pops, I'm selling it. I love that sound clip. I'm looking to sell it all. If anything pops, I'm looking to sell. It. Right. So that's kind of what I got going on. I mean, I don't trade. Obviously, I don't trade a, a ton of pro products. I I don't. I'm not one of those people that can um, focus on that many different. Uh, products at the same time so um and just like to concentrate on a few so really those are you know the only real markets that i'm currently looking at i mean i watched other markets as well but those are the only ones that i'm currently trading yeah no, uh, we also sense. you know we yeah. also have some interesting things going on oh i forgot well even though it's not my market and i don't want to step on the fence's toes um but we do have um we do have you know this uh, this is a gold daily chart. Um, we have this descending broadening wedge. So, you know, whether or not that pa that pattern plays out, we'll have to see. It doesn't matter if, you know, price could come all the way back down here, but it is a pretty bullish price pattern uh, in the daily chart. So that's kind of what I'm watching in, in gold as well. Well, that's, I think, as well. And also when you take a look at what, what the euro's done, what the dollar's done, what yields have done, uh, that gold is actually traded well and it's going to be a really interesting close tomorrow i think on the weekly close if uh, you know right. we, we still have to see non-farm we still got to see where things close because it's uh difficult uh getting bullish gold and picking a bottom in gold but uh you know anytime people get bullish it disappoints and so uh you know we'll see but if if we were to close above 1200 1205 i think that would be a pretty that would be a win for gold, given what you've yeah. done this week. I mean, if, if we could, or, you know, even right on that trend line around, you know, if we, again, yes, I agree. You know, if it could stay above, if it's ahead of above 1,200, then, you know, that would be a pretty solid week, I think, for, for gold. That said, though, actually, as I look back up, you know, we were trading pretty firmly before we've given back and now we're flat on the day back at 1202. You know, for gold yeah. bulls, I'm sure they would much prefer to see that above 1205 to give them some wiggle room on non-farm day. Um, because I, I get the sense with volatility picking up here and as we speak, S&P trading on another new low. Again, that, new low. Yeah, oh. and so <laughs> it, it seems like with uh, volatility picking up, you know, with non-farm tomorrow, we actually could start to get back to a more normal sort of range uh you know some sort of range basically for non-farm which we have not really seen the past few uh meetings uh past few releases so right be a really interesting price action uh but yeah keep us uh keep us updated on everything you're doing as you always do and uh you know there's gonna be some good trading opportunities out there so uh keep us absolutely posted. so yeah so i'm uh, to wrap up i'm looking to sell everything i can <laughs> there you go all right thank you tracy have a good rest of the day all right thanks